but they're looking at the other part of the Bible. Thank you. You know what I mean? They're looking at the part of the Bible you need to provide for your family, like put bread on the table. Whereas he's like, don't put any, not, shouldn't be putting anything in your body and all this shit. Like, man, sit in Jamaica, it fucking sucks right now. <laughs> There ain't nothing there. <laughs> Isn't it like beautiful sunshine and ocean? And yes. Paradise? Sorry. Aside from the weather. <laughs> that was like a Jamaica tour uh, tourism video right there. <laughs> Sit in Jamaica. It fucking sucks. <laughs> I love Jamaica. Jamaica's my favorite place to be other than Canada. But. Oh, shit. Eh, I could probably go to top five. They'd be in the top five. Top <laughs> five places to be other than in- now, other, other than, than Canada, Canada, my top five places would be one of them. Is, top three would be one Jamaica, <laughs> I'd say. But right now, like I'm saying, if you had to go there and live there, yeah, you'd be sweeping on a dirt floor. <laughs> <laughs> Never be out of work though, right? <laughs> no, you just keep sweeping all fucking day, all day, looking for that bottom, looking for the bottom. <laughs> damn it! God damn it! I thought I had it. I don't even want to go to bed. No. <laughs> yeah, sweep yourself a basement. Someone tall's coming over. My guys, I, my guys, literally, like right now, this time of year, if I go on, one of them's on Facebook Live, and they're just sitting there. Like Jamaicans are weird. Like, like they, I'm telling you, I'm not kidding you, Kev. They'll sit there and just stare on Facebook Live and stare at the camera. It's, oh yeah. Hey, Wes. The guy that does our I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Hey, you got to get in that uh, mic. He posted a picture of his ex-wife went after his fridge with an axe. Really? Yeah, it was fucked. So they were, they were <laughs> breaking up, and there was a picture, like he did a video thing of his kitchen, and there was a fucking hatchet sitting in <laughs> his fucking Wedged room. in the fridge? Yeah, it was still stuck in his fucking uh, fridge. That's awesome. He, the, sorry. There was he doing with a wedge in the fridge? I was. A, him and his girlfriend broke up. Him and his girlfriend broke up. So she went fucking ballistic, and she fucking went after his fridge with a fucking with a hatchet. Yeah, machete. Oh, his fridge She's stuck in the, a machete. This is they call it. <laughs> this is a Jamaican uh, love affair. That's yeah. what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this yeah. is a West story. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, see, I, see, Jamaicans are some of my favorite people in the world. Don't get me wrong. But what's weird about him? When they do Facebook Live videos and they just stare at their own face. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think there's teenage girls that do that too, right? Yeah, they just stare at their own face. It's awkward. And uh, what their version of dancing is uh, literally uh, fucking with clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, like, yeah. like it's, li- it's like taking dry humping to like a fucking extreme level like a turn it into a sport and then you'll have your buddy t- five feet away with his phone taking a video of you <laughs> just watching just watching just yeah watching yeah it doesn't sound like a bad night though eh? it doesn't you'd have a, you'd go home with a you'd go home with i think a bruised heart on uh, yeah hey eh? yeah yeah i see how violently they were like humping people yeah and those, it, like uh it's their it's their version of dancing <laughs> And they'll like put they'll put a woman's forehead through drywall, <laughs> like they're humping that hard. But that's dancing. Yeah, I've seen I've I've seen it actually the in real life. But I've also seen it in clubs too, where uh, people like are trying to make that a Canadian thing. Yeah, and like it's. it's I don't a, think it, it goes over as well. No, it's. I think it's a Caribbean yeah. thing. It's not just Jamaican. It's a Caribbean thing. Yeah, like they do that in other like uh, Bahamas. I think they they really uh, like they really like to shove their pants dick. <laughs> against <laughs> against a woman's uh, pants bosom, yeah. A bo- are their bosom or like titty fucking dry humping? They oh, probably yeah. or against they, their their ass. Or their, yeah, their their. Uh, it's literally like doggy style, like they do doggy style. Not their bosom, but their uh, what's that? What's another? Their uh, rump. Their rump. Their rump. That's a good better term. Yeah, their yeah. rump. And they literally like bend them over, like they'll they'll force their head down. Ahead of them, yeah. Like it's literally like animals mating in the wild. You call it animals? I call that's how men fuck beef. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do. Yeah. It's not supposed to be pretty, you know. 
<laughs> you see any other animals that are like you know blowing kisses to each other before? No, no you're right. It's, it's pretty. Gr- it's pretty. Go in there and get it done. There's u- and there's usually blood and there's usually gripping and there, yeah, you're right. It's quick. It's quick. You're not apologizing for for. You know what? I, you're quick. right though. No lions ever going like sorry. I was so too fast. Quick. No. No crying. No. They run away after. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> and then there's the then there well and then there's fucking dogs that they get stuck to each other. Yeah, because of their like knitting needle cocks. Well, they they, Isn't that they, they swole. They go <laughs> swole. <laughs> Swells are right <laughs> shut and then they're just stuck together. They're just stuck together. I fucking seen it one time and then the dog fucking turned like to run away and I'm like, oh, that fucking probably hurt like. <laughs> Dog's dick went inverted. Like, oh it, it, no! Man. It's like fucking let that thing go, <laughs> let it go. She had like a pussy trap. Eh? Just yeah, got him. Eh? Fucking, it's like <laughs> like a finger trap. But well, it's like yeah. it's like if a woman would do the old cl- legs around, you know, clench around you. You did not try to go to pull out, and you can't. Yeah, I would like that. I would like that. <laughs> you would like that. Yeah, I would. I would like that. I would think it'd be good. I would like to be trapped in a vagina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You would turn and run. No, it's my favorite place to be. I think <laughs> I would enjoy it. Yeah, I, I, I've never pulled out in my life, ever, ever, wow. ever, ever. You never have you ever seen a load? Uh, no, never, ever. That's never a, pulled out. Never. never. You never filled a belly button or? Wow, ne- we haven't even started. Once. We haven't not, even started the show. <laughs> oh, I thought you did like start. This. No, I've no. Never. We're we're recording and we're on all the the um, platforms. But you know, we can't really start a show, oh, Beaver. I've never until, I've, until we do one thing. Yeah, you're right. And then we get to talk about this juicy tidbit. <laughs> <that's three> hours, <laughs> right? And so, uh, but we got to do the one thing first, and that's called the theme song. People, hit it, Kev. Let's hit. It. No, hit it! How do you know that? Nope. Wow. Never. The legend, the legend just gets better. I'm excited. Think about it. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the Dutch Hall. We're back in the pool shed for another, uh, whatever, Thursday night this is. It's not Thursday. It's Wednesday, but whatever it is. It's Thursday to some people because you're listening to this on Thursday, I'm sure. But we're back in the Dutch Hall. We're here for the greatest podcast in the history of mankind, the Dutch Hall with Pete Van Dyke. And we have a bunch of regulars. We crowd the the hall with a bunch of regulars this week. We've been having guests in, and we thought, you know, enough of that. these fucking uh, people from elsewhere. Yeah. I want to find out what real people from from real, like, salt of the earth places in southwestern Ontario, you know, like, outside of the major metropolises. Like, what do regular people think about what's going on? So I had in the greatest cast I could come up with. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce them. First of all, we have the guy running the board. The All Star of Season Eight, and so far he's doing okay to put his name in for Season Nine. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Fingers Van Dungeon. Yeah, I right don't. I right don't. Wave the finger. <laughs> <laughs> beside me, right beside me. I don't even know if he's on camera this week because he is uh, to be ashamed of himself. But, ladies and gentlemen, we'll give him a brief introduction. Robot Dave, everyone. Robot yeah. Dave. Yeah, ball. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow, that's a nice car, isn't it? He's the oddball this week. <laughs> yeah, very nice. He can just sit there. We have a more important guest, and he's it's really nice to have him back. He's uh, a, a, one of my favorite. Uh, I'm not even going to say one of my favorite. My favorite uh, person we've ever had on the Dutch Hall ever. He was uh, my favorite member of the Nocturnal Emissions, and uh, to be honest, he's my favorite uh, person I've ever uh, went to his wedding in Jamaica. Uh, I'll tell you. I've never been to anyone else's wedding in Jamaica that I've liked more than this man right here. Whiskey. Wes Higgins, everyone. Yeah. Nice to have you back, Wes. 
Yeah, it's it's just like it's it's like you're where exactly where you should be, Wes. It's nice to see you right there. But you know, the same guy beside you now here just dropped a bomb. No doubt. And we have to introduce him, ladies and gentlemen, the man who has never in the history of mankind. <laughs> Taken his penis and pulled it out and ejaculated. <laughs> He's only done it inside a woman. Derek Beaver Van Hooten, everyone. Yeah. I'm back. Running, Derek, running deep. Oh, man, I love this. So many questions. <laughs> so just a quick introduction for me. I'm the host of the show and two-time. Two-time. President's Club Award winner, Pete Van Dyke. Yeah. This show writes itself. This show writes itself. <laughs> I can't believe it. We have Beaver has made a claim. I got to see if there's already people that are chatting on this thing because no, there's not. No one cares. Good. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Beaver. Now, in, in order to substantiate this claim, I need to ask a few questions about this. Number one, uh, you lost your virginity, uh, correct, uh, to a woman. Yes. And uh, when you did this, you ejaculated. Right? Yes. And uh, this first was, time, like the, it's it is what they say. It sucks. Yeah, like as in you're you wearing a condom, right? Yeah. So you didn't pull out. You you would no. Actually, my first time was actually a little bit of an issue. Because <laughs> oh, because because uh, from my recollection, condom broke. Oh, tensions were hot. <laughs> Windows were steaming. Things had to happen. So. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, the condom it didn't. It, yeah, it, it it was one of those hold it in scenarios because the and then the roommate showed up. Oh, so you never got to finish. It was like almost like I I I can't even des- almost can't describe it. It was like it was I was like on the cusp of uh, finish. Yeah, and it was like oh shit, you need to we we need to move. We need to move. So I it just kind of didn't happen. Like I didn't finish. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then, I, then I had to finish. And then I had to finish. In the bathroom with her, like she came and with me and I finished in the bathroom. Right. But in normal. Like we went for round two. So first time. And that actually, time it, the condom didn't break. There was no condom. No condom. But you, then you ejaculate inside of the woman. Yeah. <laughs> That's so crazy to me. Number one, what year would this be? Like this would be in the. For me, this was, I could tell you. <laughs> fucking. Would it be like in the I 2000s? High school was when was in high school? When I graduated from high school, I uh, know we're we're knocking on like yeah like oh war around the around the cusp of the century uh, yeah right around Y two K right around there and that time man like they haven't figured out age yet we th- we still think magic might die right yeah <laughs> at that point well uh, no apparently it's almost like they they haven't figured it out but apparently like he's still going. Yeah, I know, but at that time, you don't know if you 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 were just plant planting seeds and girls. Oh yeah, know? it was. It you, was were, you, you were you were playing Russian roulette. Yeah, you're crazy, man. Yeah, and then not to mention babies, and then like yeah. all that stuff. Like there was the, there and, was and, like, the conversation of a condom. There was a condom, but it just never got on. Yeah, did you did you ever get an STD? Never, and I I was regularly tested too. Lucky man. Yeah, I just uh, I. It, <laughs> It was, you got all the best. It was not necessarily <laughs> not necessarily by choice, but I was like selective with uh, with my situations. Like I mean, I wish I could make a claim like that. Like I never did that. Like I, but I, you know, obviously, you know. So, but sometimes you just want to see it, don't you? you? Just want to like, you know, see how much you got in you. So you're just like, well, maybe I'll just put this one on the tummy. Just well, so I just I go by a, like you go by reaction. <laughs> like you get a, holy shit, that was a lot or holy, you know, yeah, they gotta, then they got to go. Yeah. Then they got to go fucking go sit on the toilet, you know, <laughs> yeah, usually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So usually there's some cleanup no matter what. Yeah. I usually what I do when I'm finished having s- sex is usually like I keep it in there, like to hold all the product in there. Yeah. And then what I do is I make my wife uh, like uh, put her face to the end of the bed, and then we kind of like shimmy. Oh, so bodies. you guys do it like a yeah team? It's like teamwork. Yeah. And then when I get her when I get her face it's to just the, a quick when move. Her, when I get her face <laughs> to the carpet, when I get her face to the carpet, <laughs> I say to her um, like, uh, "You're gonna probably want to use your hands because we're doing the wheelbarrow. <laughs> we're doing right. the wheel- hey, we've she's all got a wheelbarrow to the toilet, so it yeah, doesn't leak out. Oh, I've done the wheelbarrow. <laughs> I've done the wheelbarrow before. You, you have to. Yeah, you have to. And then you just you, when you get close up to the toilet, you just toss her her vagin 
at the <laughs> toilet water, you know? Yeah. Hopefully, that, and then you're like, your problem now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you're just strutting around your bedroom like you're fucking, you know, a fucking king of your bedroom. So you never, like, shot some uh, web slingers across the room or nothing like that? No. No, I never made a mess. No. I, I, I was never. Well, that's one thing you can say I'm a, about I'm a tidy person. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, it would bother me because I, the next thing you know, you can't find it or something. <laughs> I shouldn't tell this story, but I think it's so funny. Uh, one time when I was just dating, I'm a young man, you know. Yeah. Anyways, I'm getting a handy down in the, you know, in her parents' basement, you know. See, that? that's kinky. And... Uh, <laughs> Well, Did you guys create not at the time you're like a teenager, like a handy's like as far as you're gone. Yeah. You know? like, yeah. But anyways, uh I blew a wide uh all over <laughs> brother's uh, baseball card. <laughs> <laughs> the value instantly goes down. Oh Yeah, sorry, buddy. Your uh your fucking Hank Aaron rookie card is now not no longer Hank yeah. Aaron, it's White Aaron. It's yeah. George Bell. <laughs> Roger, Roger Clemens is stuck to uh, yeah George Bell. I don't know yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. shit, he was really on steroids. Yeah, I remember Man. being like, yeah, I remember like seeing it right on one of the guys' like faces for real. Like it was on a thing. It was a big like glob because we were like cleaning up. Kind of went haywire at the end. <laughs> then uh, panic set in, and then I like find this card, and it's like a huge like like chunk on there, and I'm like, holy mackerel! Look at this one. <laughs> Gotta wipe it off with a washcloth. There's a few kids. <laughs> there's a few kids on that card. <laughs> yeah, man. Every once in a while, when you do get a loadout, and you're like, wow, that's a giant one. You know, like it's like you kind of are proud of yourself. I was told. <laughs> I was told by a doctor it's not safe to hold it in. What you okay. shouldn't know? I think you are. You have to blow up the pipes once in a while. Yeah, it's, like it, anything after uh, anything after uh, I think it's five days. I'll be right back. She's pretty well dead. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty well dead. You just gotta get rid of it right? and start a fresh batch. Yeah, yeah. I've been telling my uh, wife that she is like, uh, that's not my problem. <laughs> you know, so it's like it's, I have taken my own hands. Yeah. Also, I realized through the pandemic that love is. Not unconditional. It's very conditional. <laughs> very conditional. And uh, and uh, I don't I don't accept the conditions, <laughs> so I don't get the love. You know. So sometimes I just like take it in my own hands, literally, by jerking off. Yeah, you know. What I mean? <laughs> Shaking hands with the unemployed. Yeah, like pulling your cock until it pukes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the romantic way to say it? Yeah. That's the uh, literal way to say it. Anyways, you know, it's funny that we talked all of this uh, dirty talk right off the hop when we titled this show, Our Opinion of the Truckers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. It'd be even better if we didn't talk about the entire uh, show. Oh, by the way, Wes, at, at some point in the show, we should talk about the, the nocturnal emissions. I, I think I have a question I need to, talk, need to ask you yeah, in cool. order to get this uh, something taken care of. But we should save it to the end because it's really important. And, um, but, uh, what were we saying again? Truckers or we don't want, or yeah, we want to do the truckers. I'll, this is, I want to talk about the truckers and because I titled the show it, so I should talk about it. Right. But this is what I think about the truckers. Number one, I want to preface this because it is a, our, this is, uh, not, uh, reflective of our program, the Dutch hall, the Dutch hall, we generally do not get political I don't like to take a side because I hate all politicians. I think they're all shitty and they serve the needs of uh, uh, corporate money and their own fucking uh, agenda, ag their own shit. Right. Yeah. They don't give a fuck about us. If they knew that they're going to get reelected and all of us are going to die, they would let all of us die. Yeah. You know? like they, would, <laughs> yeah. they wouldn't care. No. The only reason they would want to pretend to keep us alive is because it would keep them their job you know oh, yeah, man. they really don't care to serve us like public servants so i hate politics across the board i don't care what color you are what uh, like left right center whatever it is i don't care i don't like any of you also the second uh, reason is because if anyone tells me that this is the your ideology like i'm a conservative so i think this way then or you have to think this way. It's like there's certain things I would say I agree with them on. 
There's other things I'd look at the liberals. I say, I agree with them on that. And I agree with the NDP on that. And I agree with you know, whoever on this. Right. I, the, I, you don't, most people don't really feel the way a fucking political party would feel, you no, know, yeah, makes, makes unless serious. you're the type of person who's told what to think. And then you just blindly think what you're told. You don't and have then, an independent and then, thought. And then you're, you're part of a cult more or less. Yeah. You're, or yeah. you're, you're just a yeah. fucking idiot. You yeah. Know? Like you're, you're like a sheep or something, you know, but the, those, but uh, that being said, so that's why I don't like political parties. I want to, I wouldn't associate myself with any of them because they're, all sh- uh, shit and they're and then and then it's not even realistic to say a party is going to reflect me you know like right like uh, they're not going to find a party that's going to think like pete van dyke that's crazy we'd just be good party though it'd be hilarious the, yeah. w- to listen to the uh speeches and then watch the fucking country go downhill quick <laughs> 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 but it can be really worse than this but anyways uh the but we are going to talk about this because i think that they've gone too far in a lot of ways. They've gone too far uh, at trying to like fucking just um, bullshit us. You know, like it, it's 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 more uh, like this trucker issue is is it really like shone light on how fucking like fucked up the system is to me. Right, because they're literally doing nothing. That's part of it. But the other thing is. I knew about this trucker convoy, like uh, really early before it happened. Like I could, I heard there's buzz on social media about it. People, it was becoming a thing, right? Right, rumblings, yeah. And then it happened. It's happening, and there's like fuck off or uh, news coverage of it. And then when the news coverage does start, it's all really negative, right? Oh, excuse me. And then it's uh, it's all really negative, and it's just really painting like. They're showing the swastika on the flag and the rebel Confederate flag, flag Confederate and, flag, yeah. and they 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 paint it out to be these. They're, they're comparing it to like September or to like January sixth, and they're they're alt right this and that, and they're 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 painting this evil boogeyman, you know. Well, the problem is, is they're the 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 media is painting, which that's not the jo- that's not the job of media. The media is to is to is to ex- exhaust or ev- or portray not portray sorry it's supposed to be objective right right objective yeah objective but to the to the for the public you know but they're not they're no. not reporting the news they're telling a story right and they're telling the story that they want to tell and it's this and it's the it's following an agenda that they want to follow you know yeah. now that'll change if they think they can make more money being on the side of the of the truckers they're going to switch sides including Trudeau yep. include he'll switch sides and pretend he was on their side the whole time once he realizes that's what he's got to do save his ass well Pete the problem is is a bunch of Canadians protesting isn't really gonna sell the sell the news because we're a bunch of they're they're fucking doing they're dancing and fucking having a great time just at, while they're protesting and they're doing it in the right way it's yeah, they're, that, they're not they're not looting and yeah. rioting and you know what I mean? Yeah, they're, they will. T- they will interview every annoyed neighbor, right? That lives in the neighborhood. before they interview a trucker. They yeah. still haven't interviewed any truckers. Yeah, they don't want to give them a platform. <laughs> no, yeah, that's the thing. That's the whole reason that it's not going to go away. Because as long as you try to pretend they don't exist and like vilify them into being this like monster that they're not, right? Then they're going to say like, no. As long as you're like not treating me right like you're not representing me you're not treating me right you're obviously fucking fucking with me here you know like this is uh then i'm not gonna like uh, like go away right this is making me more angry well i think more convicted in my thing and this thing started out sorry i'll uh, just let me finish it but the this thing started out as um as a like uh, the truckers didn't want to have to be mandated to get a vaccine right and and if you listen to the way the government, like Trudeau especially, is talking about this shit, it's about, uh, it's about like the vaccine. That it's the vaccine mandate. They, they boil it down to that simple thing, and that's how it started. But it's not where it is now. No, it's everything. Yeah, it's everything. Every it's everybody who's pissed off about the pandemic to this point is like, yeah, I'm pissed off just like these guys are. I'm on these guys' side. Fuck them. You know, mm-hmm. and that's how we feel. You know why Black Lives Matter uh, was such a big deal? 
it, it was a horrible thing, but they were killing black guys before all the time. Right. The reason was because they were in a lock. We were in a lockdown. And then that happened, and then people were like, "Fuck this," you know, mm-hmm. like they were mad at everything, and they were like. Uh, I don't want to feel like this anymore. I'm in a fucking house for a month. I'm watching my family suffer. Yeah. I'm suffering. I'm fucking not happy right now. And you're telling me that I'm a fucking alt-right nut job, you know? Yeah. The establishment is making me do all this. They need to hear the yeah. frustrations, right? Yeah. Yep. And then they'll, if I do too much, even on this show, about how I think – some of the mandates are going too far based on how the uh, virus has mutated and what the tr- trends for further mutations is going to be, you know, like it, it, it would be, they can pull me, right. You know, they can pull me for having that opinion and that that's, a, it's an opinion. It's an opinion. <laughs> That's all it is. It's you an know? opinion. It's your personal opinion. It's not. Well, someone might think you actually know what you're talking yeah. about. Well, that's, not, that's, <laughs> that's not, their fault. That's not for <laughs> your, your, your influence around the world, too. Yeah, yeah. I exactly. Think- but like that's the thing. I They wouldn't really pull me because nobody gives a fuck about me. But if all of a sudden I'm Joe Rogan, yeah. then they care about me, right? And that's the thing. They don't care about Joe Rogan until Joe Rogan's saying things that are messing with what they're trying to accomplish here. They're trying to push this this mandate this, these mandates they're trying to exercise control over what you can and can't do yeah. which is like how fa- if they can do this now then are like are they how are they going to be able to use it for other things that they want to enforce you know like well right. i think their problem too is is they can't they're having a hard time accepting that rogan's got a hundred million followers on a fucking mm. daily basis it's that's, one dude that's got that much power. It's just a dude, and he's not behold into anybody. So he's he not just in any. Doing en- it. He's not behind any entity or anything. He's just an. Op- he's just saying his opinion. You know what's Yeah, nice. that, that, that that's scary to them. Pa- yeah. Too much power to a person. Right. It's not too like if anybody's going to Rogan for their information. Like really. Right. Yeah. Like he's just a, a comedian that, that does Fear Factor and commentates cage fights. Yeah, but he also will have on like really uh, <laughs> expert professionals in there. Sure, he's had a lot of them, and he's just all he's is is talking out loud. Well, he's he's just, just talking out situations. But they'll take a, a interview he has with Jordan like, Peterson. Like Jordan Peterson, they'll put it at the same weight as the as a interview he has with uh, Bert Kreischer, or that uh, what's that nut job. Uh, a crazy guy that oh always yeah. yelling. I know nine eleven talk- guy. Nine ele- I know. Yeah, then, about, uh, he's uh, a big dude. Uh, yeah, fat guy. Alex Jones. Yeah. Alex Jones, yeah. Yeah, like Al- Alex he, Jones is ridiculous. He's yeah. Everything about him is ridiculous. Yeah, he's, he's way too intense. so over the top and yep. like – and like uh, they give him a platform to do his thing, which is – like he's selling crazy entertainment in the States. And yeah, It's right. the same thing that the news channels do and everything. Like, right. Yeah. It's it's it's. it's Glorifying it's like, it. It's like fucking, it's uh, it's borderline parody. You wonder what this guy's doing. Like, he can't really take himself that seriously. So Rogan had Bernie Sanders on. Yeah. And he also had that, uh, I was going to say Kamala Harris, but the girl from Hawaii, She's a, she was running for president at one point. In yeah. Uh, uh, T- uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah. So, like, are they uh, are they villains now too? Yeah, like I, he just gives people a platform where they can talk for a long time. And he does; it's not yeah. yelling and screaming over each other. It's like, but it, but somehow, if they can make a connection in any way, like even if you were to, if I was to have a person on the, on my show that I don't agree with, like I just say I don't agree with them, right? Right? Like like that, Craig McLaughlin. Yeah, I didn't agree with anything Craig said at all. And at a certain point in time, I know this guy's not going to let me get a word in edgewise. He's got his. Mind made up that this is how he feels, and it doesn't matter how ill informed he is, he's going to keep going on, like digging his heels in on this thing. Mm-hmm. Mount Rooney's the root of e- all evil, you know? Yep. And they're, and, uh, but that guy to me, and I know it made Bonesy, our listener, angry. <laughs> and, uh, I'm like, you know, uh, this is how some people think. Think. And, and, you- and, uh, and I, at one point, I had to say, like, I don't, maybe I don't have to. I'm not going to tell this guy to think differently. No. Even if I believe that I'm right and he's wrong. But for me to say, like, I don't, I'm going to cut that out of the show. Cause I thought like, I didn't like that end of that, that part that show. I was really mad. Like, cause like I would, I thought it was kind of like too political and like, right. it was going to rub people the wrong way. But I thought like, this is a real person 
who really thinks this, who's in the room. Yep. And it's who I'm not, it, I don't think it, but I'm going to put it on my show. Right. And, and, uh, it's a different viewpoint. Yeah. You know, like if some people might agree with it, you know, it might, uh, promote discussion. It might, uh, make people who didn't think that way before, maybe think of it for the first time or something, you know, like now you look like I fucking hate, um, algorithms those algorithms like on uh, youtube yeah, yeah, yeah. And facebook and your advertising on instagram and all that shit they try to figure who out who you are and what you want and they listen to your conversations and all that bullshit and then all of a sudden you get an ad for what you're just talking about that yeah. sort of stuff yeah fucking hate it because it only tells me what i already want yeah right. confirmation you, bias man. you want new yeah you want new i i want to watch something that i don't know exists so that I or be exposed to something I don't agree with, but see it in context. Yep. So I can see the guy's full point rather than just hear a person that thinks like me take that stuff, take only the parts that like uh, suit his or her argument, and then feed it back to me and tell me what I already think. Right. How is that expanding my mind? How am I learning about anything if I'm just being fed back what I already? Yeah, that's what makes everybody think they're right. You know, I'm a YouTube expert or a yeah. Facebook expert because everything that I think is being confirmed by everything that I'm seeing. Yeah, fuck that, man. I I, I opt out all those things all the time if I can, if I see that I can do it so they don't figure me out. And I know it's just working. And sometimes I'll just start saying shit that I don't want to the computer. To so hope to see if you get yeah. something else out of it. Yeah, well, that's why, and that's the problem with like TikTok and all that shit. <laughs> There's too many bull. Like, it's full of fucking people twerking and and uh, and doing fucking bullshit TikTok dances, and all the, that's all you see all day long. And then it, some dude puts a white lab coat on. And he's an expert. Yeah. Well, but they're they're, they're, they're promoting stupidity, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah they're promoting like like over on the other side of the world, you won't see that shit on TikTok. Though they're promoting like the neck like you know, the next genius or the next this or that. They want smart people over there. We're just fucking breeding retards. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I, a, I, we are getting dumber by the year for sure. There's no question. Going backwards, man. I may, have said well, the wrong, I may have said the wrong word there, but. Yeah. <laughs> bring it back. Let's bring it back. <laughs> the R word. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, I said it, I've been, I've said it the last, this is the third week in a row we've said it. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Because I said it last week when I was talking about the previous week. <laughs> where I called, where I called dolphins retarded whales, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, because uh, they are dumber than whales, right? Dolphins, do you think? Uh, well, everyone thinks dolphinism is like, dumb. Is a mammal? Yeah, they're a smart mammal. Yeah, but compared to a whale, yeah, oh. like if the two of them were together, it's like saying like a, a chimpanzee is a primate, like a human. Right, you're right, you know, you're right. Yeah, but I'm way smarter than a chimpanzee. Right. But they'll rip my face off. <laughs> yep. Right. And laugh and throw shit at you. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like I th I think of a dolphin is like a chimpanzee and a <laughs> to, and to, a, yeah. to a human. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I was trying to figure out where a manatee was, like an orangutan or something, like or yeah. maybe you know, maybe a, I don't know. It's so hard to think like this, but it's what I do. <laughs> what, what, like, what, if you had to have one for a pet, what would you pick? If I had to pick a smart, a like smart between a sea mammal, gorilla. No, oh, okay, yeah. Oh, between I was gonna, yeah, you got a pool, sure. I, between a gorilla, uh, a chimpanzee, chimpanzee, or a monkey. Uh, I would take the gorilla. It would have to be. It have to be tamed, right? Relatively. Relatively. Like yeah, Pete could control it. It might not like other people. A gorilla is a vegetarian, so I think I'd stand the best chance with a gorilla. A monkey though, could I could do a monkey. I'd really like an orangutan, though, if I could throw that one in the mix, because I saw one thing on uh, TV <laughs> where these orangutans would break into this this like hut of the ranger in the in one of the jungles that they lived in, and they would steal the soap, <laughs> and they just like to soap themselves really because they love lathering their body. Eh? They like so, to suck. So my my mom went to, <laughs> my mom went to uh, fucking where. Um, uh, where'd she go in the desert? Fucking, uh, she went on vacation with my aunt and it was a big deal. Like they had to like, like have security guards to watch out for the orangutans. Oh, orangutans were mean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, and they'll come in and take the food, right? Like, or, or like, soap, I bet. Well, it, maybe, but yeah. like while you're sleeping, right? They'll sneak into the 
fucking little huts. So you got to be careful. What did mm. you pick, Beef? So say the three again. Uh, gorilla, a orangutan, or a monkey. See, I like a gorilla because I could probably, I could, it could probably, I could, it could, I could ride a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Wes? I don't know. Anything uh, that would go get me a beer. Oh, oh, I love it. That's a good. That's a good call. I would have picked chimpanzee until they ripped that woman's face off because, like, you th- saw them all smoking cigars and riding bikes. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. look like they're fun. They right? don't show the ruthless side of them. Yeah. <laughs> but then now, uh, and Throws I a beer at you. I heard uh, it was a comedian that went to Michael Jackson's house or something like that. He was maybe it was Chappelle or something. No, I don't know who it was. No, Eddie Murphy or something. Mm-hmm. He met Bubbles. You know, Bubbles, the chimpanzee, because he went to Michael Jackson's house, and then he's like. Eddie Murphy says, "Like Michael Jackson said, stay away from Bubbles. Like he's a psycho. He'll, he's a psycho. Yeah. Like and and it was it was not like a well kept monkey, hmm. like it, or a chimp. It, it was like in the cage. Yeah. <laughs> in the cage, you are stuck in captivity. And, yeah. and who'd have thought uh, Michael Jackson wouldn't be a good caretaker for <laughs> a jungle animal? You yeah. Know? Imagine Jesus. a gorilla answering your door for you. Uh, I don't know if you can teach a gorilla that much. You can. Did, did I ever tell you my yeah. gorilla story? No. Because it's." It's one of my favorite things that really happened to me. That's why I think I must have told it a hundred times. So, if, but I don't. Maybe I've never told this on the show. But one time I lived in London, England. <laughs> I feel like I'm a like a dad that's getting around to tell a story to his kids oh, for bed. <laughs> yeah, that's what I just kind of feel like. Get a new one. Let's get a new one. Gather around, everyone. We're going to tell the story when Uncle Pete <laughs> <laughs> went to London. I went. I lived in England and. Uh, uh, my uh, wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, came to visit me. We went to the uh, London Zoo, which is right behind where I lived. And they had an enclosure. It was an interesting day. I had a chimpanzee. Like, you know how um, you know how female chimpanzees, when they're in heat, they're like pussy. Swells up. Yeah, it becomes like a basketball that sits outside of their yeah, body. I, I didn't know that. Giant, huge, like, basketball pussy that just hangs outside of their body. <laughs> Anyways, this chimpanzee was swinging around with the basketball pussy. And it swung, like, by the fencing where I was standing, and I got, like, chimpanzee piss on my coat. Oh. And I was like, uh, you know, chimpanzee Chimpanzee piss. was throwing its scent on you. And I was like, I'm a, let's go to see the gorilla. So we go to the gorilla enclosure. It's, so it's a it's a glass. So at the, in, the, in this moment, you have the chimpanzee. Piss on my coat. Yeah. But I don't think the gorilla could smell it. But it, it's in a glass enclosure, but oh. I don't know. Oh, okay. But so I go up to the glass, right? And there's a gorilla that's in there that's really looking miserable. Yeah. He's kind of like rocking back and forth and he's miserable. And then there's a there's a there's another gorilla that's like off in the distance. You can just see it off in the distance. And then the like ranger comes around and says, uh, we put this new female in with the male and they're both, they're, they are both in a bad mood because they don't want to have to get to know each other, you know? Yep. And so that's what they say to us. And then I'm, I'm watching the gorilla <laughs> who's close to the glass where I'm standing. And I kind of go up to the gorilla and I'm looking at him through the glass. And he's like, at first, not very interested in me, like kind of annoyed by it, yeah. but me doing it. But then he all of a sudden like decides to get up and walk up to me, like all the way to the glass. Yeah. And uh, he's looking right at my face, like me and the gorilla <laughs> face to face at the glass. And I'm like, this is so cool. You and know? you didn't move. You just stood there and stared. I stood there. I'm like, stare oh. down. Come on, fucking girl. I'm not going to blink. You know? <laughs> like a UFC fight, like a press conference. Yeah, I'm like, there's a piece. They're not. It's not going to be able to get through the glass. So I'm like uh, doing this, and then the gorilla fucking turns around and uh, puts its like ass towards me. You know, he's got his back toward me. Yeah, and he puts his hand underneath his like oh, his I did balls sh- and stuff. He did the shit throw, and and he shits in his hand. Yeah. Right, he shits into his hand. And then he uh, turns around and he comes back to the glass and he shows me the shit. <laughs> He's holding it to like this and he eats the shit oh. out of his hand. He eats the shit right out of his hand. He's, oh. like, uh, wow. he's just looking at me eating the shit out of his that hand. That is intense. A gorilla, yeah. What a stare down. It's fucking awesome. You should have did it to him. 
<laughs> it was really cool. I should have, yeah. I thought that you won. I, I was like, you win, buddy. Yeah. yeah. I ain't doing it. I that. thought he would have threw it at the glass. Like, the, so monkeys. Yeah, that's monkeys what I was thinking, too. The throw shit, but They'll this throw. guy ate it. I never saw eating it coming. That's I wonder what he would have done if you ate, if you did the same thing. Like, not necessarily shit, but it looked like you're eating. You would turn it up a notch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. He have tugged one out in his hand and ate it. Yeah, then he would start pulling out organs. <laughs> you know, like, whatever he's got to do. I think he was not willing to lose to me. But he, because like, he started strong. Like he, I wouldn't start with shit. No. <laughs> well, yeah, where do you go from there? I'll yeah. beat my chest or something. Still you know. In the glass even, but <laughs> yeah. But no, he ate his own shit right wow. at me, and I was like, man, I haven't even heard of an animal doing that before. That gorilla wasn't fucking around. Yeah, that's still the only time that's ever happened to me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I wish you had one my, more story. Like yeah, imagine if that does happen again. I go to a different zoo. I was at the Chicago Zoo. You wouldn't believe it. So another gorilla just ate his shit it. right in front of me. Same gorilla. My, my wife, yeah. and my, my wife and my sister in law took the kids to the zoo this summer, this summer, last summer, and they were going to go to like I think it was African Lions for some one of them. I didn't know there was multiples, but apparently there's many zoos around here. Oh yeah, and uh, there's a Killian Zoo. She's like, uh, Julie's like, yeah, we're going to go to the monkey, through the monkey enclosure with the vehicle. I'm like, no, you're fucking not. <laughs> like what? So they, my, I come back and my truck's all fucked up. <laughs> no, we were thinking about taking the baggy truck. I'm like, I don't care how much it's worth that what you're just going to willingly take, fuck my vehicle up so that you can stare at some monkeys on the hood. Some of them don't get wrecked. Really? Some of them don't get wrecked. Oh. Good for an antenna, though, usually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do want to put that antenna down if you can. <laughs> you, and, yeah, uh, if you can. Yeah. But I know that uh, my sister wrecked her vehicle at African Lights Fire, and, and she said it was a rhino. Really? Oof. Yeah. And I'm like, I didn't see any rhinos there, but it was like the vehicle a rhino. You know, like like one of those rhinos oh. like that you drive? I think that's what it was. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it was a fucking rhino. You know, you remember stories different. My kid, <laughs> my kid fed a, a hippo. A hippo? At a zoo, yeah. Through a cage. Those are the killers, eh? Yeah, man. They're the ki- the biggest killer. They just look like pigs, eh? Yeah, they fucking... I think they dropped like a watermelon or a squash or something. Oh, that's cool. And there's a little, there was a little trough. And yeah. you could only go so far, but he dropped the squash down and went right into the friggin' hippo's mouth wide open. It's like, holy fuck. When, when, when we used to still go to Marine Land, which is now... Now I wouldn't go there. I, I, say, I think it's awful what they do. Yeah. But. The old, but, the old orc is uh, sitting there fucking curled tail. Yeah, like a, that's the that's the apex predator is a, is an orca, right? Yeah. Like, there's nothing. Like a great white shark. There was a, 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 a show I saw, great white shark versus orca, right? Oh, orca's winning big time. Orca always wins. They're, everything, even humpback whales are afraid of an orca, you yeah. know, because they're, orcas are the, well, the and they, real killers. Well, and they team up, right? And, and so some fucking. Uh, animal loving, like a uh, uh, young, sweet, uh, uh, academic girl, overachieving young lady, you know, mm-hmm. she pursues a career in, uh, uh, marine biology. Cause she loves, she loves, uh, dealing with the dolphins and the smart, you know, the, the yeah, whales mean, and mean stuff. It's all caged up animals. And then she goes and works with one of these fucking orcas and then they fucking, uh, eats her fucking whole head off. What? You know? How many they, they kill their trainers? Those orcas kill a eh? tank. And then I uh, never heard of that happen. Yeah, they're just like young girls that think they're like helping out, and then the Meanwhile, orca just one day just says like, "Fuck, fuck you, you. <laughs> yeah. you're ruining my life. I should be going through the oceans." You yeah. know, like my mother in law seen when she was in Vancouver. Uh, uh, her sister, they have a place in Vancouver, uh, and uh, they seen they were by the ocean and in this little cove outside of the hotel room magically they were watching the one day and next thing you know there's like seven killer whales that were fucking orca whales that were fucking that they blocked in the cove like they blocked in the channel because they were going after these sea lions oh, yeah, yeah. but they blocked the whole, whole thing in like yeah, there were yeah. no boats getting out yeah, it was yeah. fucking cool they, they were jumping out of the water and yeah shit. i see sometimes where they see the orcas come in and then the boat owners get like kind of freaked out because they'll come in and fuck the boats up yeah because uh oh Oh, we got to shut that off. Oh. You mind again that, B? Um, it hurt. the. Cr- Did you guys hear crackle and a pop before the furnace went on? Anyways, I was thinking about, what were we saying, the orcas? Oh, I went to Marine Land, 
And uh, when when my kids were young, and you got to feed the bears, they have uh, uh, polar bears and stuff there. What's that like? They're, they can be pretty skinny as fuck, or they can be big as fuck. No. Well, it was both. It was really. Oh. It looked like a really tall, skinny person. You know, like a. It looked like. Or like I it? used to be fat, and then you lost a lot of weight, <laughs> and like because it was kind of hanging. Looked yeah. like an NBA player, seven foot tall, one hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah, because you know what you're feeding them? Corn pops. What? Oh, that's what we're. <laughs> that's they, their diet, no? Yeah, in the wild, most uh, polar bears eat corn pops. Yeah, they, yeah. Go, to, they go to the Kellogg's factory you know, up, <laughs> up in Antarctica. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever go to the Marine Land? I never. never. Marine Land also has a courtyard because it's like a it's supposed to be. I I think it's a fucked up place, Marine Land in Niagara Falls. It's got like a. A courtyard. I think it's supposed to be like old medieval court or something. Like the theme of the place, like medieval or something. Yeah. So you go to this one thing. It's like a courtyard, but it's all full of fucking diseased. I don't know why I'm swearing so much today, but diseased deer. Diseased deer. Really? They're like they're like deer, but they have like all big, huge goiters and like big tumors and shit Man, on them. Why would they do you, that? You've been there. Yep. Yeah, it's gross, right? Like the deer are like you see them, and you're like, these are the most unhealthy deer I've ever seen. Like in my it life. looks like a deer that would be in an apocalypse. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's awful, man, and it's 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 sad looking. And then uh, they look like they're suffering everywhere. And same with the bears. The bears were not in good shape either. Like uh, this place is not something to be proud of, Marine Land. It's yeah, a it piece looks, of shit. It's still mm. open. No. I don't know. They were talking about closing it. I think they got a lot of shit over the. The whale thing, I know the they're not, they had to get rid of the whales, which I think then they were allowed to keep the dolphins. I'm telling you, up until but they I think, st- and, and they ke- still have that walrus, and they had a whole documentary about the walrus <laughs> they have there. Like, I'm almost positive my wife went there, like, la- not this past year, the year before, and the whale was still there. The whale was but, still there? Yeah, but it, I, just after that, I think the whale died. I think that was the Oh, icing. it died before they had to move it. I yeah. think that is right. I think that something. was the icing on the cake that the whale died, and then it was like fucking media yeah. central. No more whale. But that, that's fucked. The whole place is gross. And then, uh, but you know who played there all the time? You could go, when you did go to the lunch park, um, you go to the lunch, like to get your like hamburger, french fries for your kids or whatever. Yeah. And they're in the courtyard, in the like where you eat is uh, Walter Osnack. They lit it. <laughs> the Poker King? You know oh, the Poker King? Walter no. Osnack? I have no idea. Oh, he's a three-time Grammy Award winner. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. If maybe even be more than that. I bet you've heard of his music at weddings. Probably. Yeah. Probably, have you ever, yeah. you ever been to Oktoberfest? In yeah, 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 yeah. Walter Osnack's always the biggest draw there. Mm. Like, he does, like, uh, he wrote the chicken dance, didn't he? Oh, yeah. He had yeah. The, and he had that show, Poker Time. Yeah, Poker Time. I'm not going to lie to you. My Oktoberfest <laughs> experiences were amazing. <laughs> but many parts of them I don't remember. <laughs> That's how they work, actually. You know you, yeah. You know the end of it actually doesn't happen for anybody. Like, like <laughs> what I always had trouble with with October with uh, with that festival is is like I was a bar scene person, so I wanted some upbeat music, <laughs> music I could hit club kid hit hit the dance floor, you yeah. know, yeah. you know, meet some people on the dance floor. Yeah. Well, when you're doing the chicken dance. Not exactly a turn on for yeah, a woman, like that you know. Um, papa. Yeah, so, this is the difference between me and you got Beaver. a fucking. You <laughs> got a huge fucking sausage on a bun in your hand, and you're like, <laughs> "How's it going?" Out. Yeah, how's it going? Like, it's not exactly. Uh, That's my style, man. Right, that is my style. That's how oh, I really? like to meet a woman. Is at a buck and dough. And then I'd like to court her for a short period of time and then marry her. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. I love buck and doughs. Hey, <laughs> buck and doughs are I love, but. You My are is a sick. club kid who wants to come deep into women. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my kryptonite is 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 the when you get into the chicken dance and all that bullshit. Oh yeah, that's the only thing I'll dance to is, yeah. is a chicken. Like dance. I used to hit, uh, you know, I used to hit up uh, that festival up with a lot was uh, cousin Jeffrey. Oh, my cousin Jeffrey. Yeah, the greatest time ever. That guy. Oh, he's he he is a uh, he would probably do very well at a October very well, fest. Yeah. very well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like uh, even though he's younger than me, I learned a couple things off him. Smooth operator, that Smooth guy. Smooth operator. Yeah, he's a real professional now. Now he's a professor. Now he's a professor. Yeah. So you should. Uh, you got to show him. He, he's not. Got to call him Mr. Deconic. Oh uh, wow. He to people he is Mr. Deconic. 
Yes, he is. He's he's a real professor. And yeah. I traveled with him one time, and uh, it was all classical music and red wine, I'll tell you. He's, <laughs> I've been it to many. A, we were driving a pickup truck, what, <laughs> drinking it. but <laughs> suit, suit jackets with leather on the uh, elbows? Yeah, it's classy now. Yeah. We're smoking pipes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, nice nice cherry tobacco in that. I was like, I do say, Peter. He'd fall in line with like a, like a, he's almost like on the verge of Ron Burgundy, I'd say. I like him. My, my Jeffrey is a, he's a Ron Burgundy. I like real I, I like his program he runs. Yeah. I like the program he runs. I'll tell you that. And I don't like, know. I feel uncomfortable talking about this so much about him, but I'm telling you, I am. Uh, I'm only saying flattering things. He's me too. A, he really is a he really does run a cool program. He do, he does his thing and he, and he does whatever he wants. Yeah. I like all guys like that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Even though some of them, I don't agree with their decisions. No. But I like the fact they're just doing their own thing. Yeah, like we used to hit up ski resorts and shit all the time too. Those were those good days. I saw a guy at the bank today that was doing his own thing. He was he took his uh his pants and his uh and he tucked his pants into like wool socks. Like he pulled his wool socks up. He was wearing shoes with wool socks. Oh, and, and you can then, see the wool socks, yeah. And pulled them over top of his pants and to he, his knee. Do the knee like to as high as the wool sock will go, like you know, a work sock? over the a work sock that, over the pants. That's a heavy Delhi thing. That sock probably looked like it came from Crompton. So it was Simcoe. Center. It was Simcoe and oh. uh, dark blue jeans. Uh, no, it was like a faded jean. Okay, yeah, like a nice faded like jean, a little bag. But I'd say it was like a boot cut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was running a nice, like heavy, we were angry mustache. Like he was like a gray mustache and he had a real like serious like uh opinionated look on his face like, so this he, guy didn't give a fuck he didn't give a fuck at all <laughs> and that's what i said to my daughter i'm in the vehicle i'm like see that guy yeah like he looks like he's a real problem but he didn't give a fuck at all like he doesn't care mm -hmm. like that move uh, that of him tucking his pants in his socks is because it kept his pants from getting wet and you guys are all the stupid ones yeah, for not doing it. it. And you know? he would be strong on that point. Yeah, function over fashion, yeah. man. Like, yeah. this guy's got a point, you know? If you pointed it out, he'd be just like, I don't who gives a fuck what you think? Yeah. yeah so, he would specifically tell you you're wrong. You're wrong, and you're probably an idiot. Yeah. Get away from me. Yeah. Or I'm going to kill you with my mustache. Get away from me with yeah. your wet pants, you fucking pity. Yeah. Look at your pants. What is that? What is that? Like a slim cut? <laughs> I'm running a and that isn't cut. and, I bought, I and that wouldn't be TSC. Yeah, yeah that wouldn't be his only weird uh situation either he'd probably live life by those kinds of situations huh like he'd live life like by doing weird shit like that like yeah every, e everything, everything is weird everything's everything is fucking left he's going left when everybody's going right it's all function though. yeah yeah you know what's weird about that what you just said what's that is that I think I'm that same way. I think I'm like, o opposite of everyone, and they, and I think everyone's like I am, and they're not. But you're not extreme that way. You're not ex uh, extreme. No, like as in you're not like there's not <laughs> fucking there's not flashing lights over your head in a fucking walking down the street kind of thing. But some people think I'm pretty fucking kooky. No, but I think you do it in your own way. Yeah, like some I'm people subtle, don't subtle. Like some people don't get me. Oh, like they'll ask me to like, I'll have like, I'll say two things to them. And they're like, they like, you can see by their face. They don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Like they like, just don't get a guy like me. They can't figure me out or something like they. So, so you're getting the look of, oh fuck. I just, what lost is you. this guy? I just lost you. Yeah. And then I know I lost him. I yeah. said something stupid <laughs> or something like something that people are uncomfortable with. I'm just learning every day that it fucking hits fucking. We ain't here for a long time, man. Might as well be here for a good time. Yeah, well, I, I really can't. Are, uh, <laughs> McConaughey. What was that? Tr Fuck. Days yeah. of Confuse. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Are you, are you, right, are you right. quoting Trooper on this show? Is oh, that <laughs> yes, he is. Fuck yeah. I'm gonna quote. You know what I also heard, Beef? What's that? Love stinks, man. Love stinks. <laughs> that, no, love bites. <laughs> love bites, yeah. That's love Nazareth, stink. right? Yeah. Love does stink, though, too. Love, love stinks, too. Love, That's another song. It does. Love stinks. Love bites, love bleeds. Depends what band you're listening to. Yeah, I guess love so. Bites was yeah. Def Leppard's Love yep. Bites? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is Def Leppard, but it goes like this. Love Bites. <laughs> love Bites. <bleed." laughs> <laughs> Nazareth was uh, Love Hurts, wasn't it? That's yeah, right. Yeah, Nazareth was Love Hurts. Yeah. Love Stinks was from an Adam Sandler movie. Yep. Oh, right, right. 
Was that him singing it? Yeah, yeah. it was. Oh, yeah. It was uh, the wedding singer, singer wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I like the wedding singer. I yeah. did too. I like uh, that arcade that played the boy George character. <laughs> it's perfect in that movie. Just there to make everyone uncomfortable. They're really turning on him. You better get back in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that, that's good. Those movies, those Sandler movies, like. Um, Gold. Sometimes you watch them and you like, ah, man, that's, like, I don't know. I feel I'm kind of embarrassed. And then you hit the right time. And then you're like, this is pretty good. It's yeah. Like, a, yeah, it's like a, it checks all the boxes. I like it. Billy Madison's pretty funny all the time. Uh, yeah, but but I got to admit, in Billy Madison, which is, I do love that movie, the shampoo is better, the cream rinse is better. I'm like, eh. I just, I'm I, not going to show that scene to my friends when I'm talking. I like that movie. You know? I like that Veronica Marsh is one hot piece of ace. Yeah. <laughs> I know from experience. No, you don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you can imagine. <laughs> or, hey, Billy, it's Nudie Magazine Day. Oh, there's somebody. <laughs> there is Billy. <laughs> uh, I like the when, uh, uh, hey, uh, you want to get a donkey truck? <laughs> I'll go get a bucket and some beer. <laughs> yeah, it's a good movie. Yep. Veronica Vaughn. She has, she was married to Pete Sampras. Pete Sampras. Was she? Pete Sampras? Sampras. Sampras. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Veronica Vaughn was married to him. She was a fine piece of ass, actually. Mm-hmm. I have a friend. <laughs> if pissing my pants, if pissing your pants makes you cool, then that makes me Miles Davis. <laughs> is that what she says, the old lady? <laughs> Sandler pretty much had the ultimate career, no? Got, oh, yeah, He got man. to do whatever the fuck he wanted, whether hey. it was a stupid movie or not. And, and, he, and, and he's and, with his friends. And, and with, with his, his friends. Yeah. Be, yeah, and he makes a gazillion dollars. Yeah, he, yeah, and it seemed easy the whole time. Like, he would wake up in a day and be like, they're like, oh, the worst Adam Sandler movies of all time. He'd be like, I don't give a fuck. I made a lot of them. If you can make a bad list, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it means you've been in a lot of movies. Yeah. And all of his bad movies, like, the like let's say Jack and Jill. My daughter is like, my youngest daughter, she's like a... She's on the internet, internet too much, I think, especially when the pandemic was happening. I think she got a little, like, they got it in her head or something. But the, the which you'd say a lot, what were you saying, poor beef, right before this? About the, the list. What list? Like Adam Sandler. Oh, Adam movies. Sandler, yeah. yeah. Jack and Jill. Jack you know that Jill. movie, Jack and Jill? Yeah, 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 I know that movie. Yeah, that one's supposed to be, like, the worst one of all of them. Yeah. And uh, Al Pacino's in it. Yeah. Al Pacino's in it for, and, like, how did they get him to do it? But anyways... Uh, I watch that movie every time. If you take it for what it is, like that it's a fucking not to be taken seriously, yeah. like bubblegum kind of piece of shit movie, then it's great for what it is. Like it's, it, I don't have a problem with it. I, no, I, but I it's bet stupid though. I, I bet you Al Pacino, they got him because he lost a bet. <laughs> maybe shit like that would happen in Hollywood. Those guys are all fucking high on the horse and Who's, fucking yeah, and, maybe. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this right now, and if I win this bet, you're going to do a movie with me and not even ask questions. What was the one where he was the devil? Yeah, that was Mr. I was... Oh, uh, uh, Little Nicky. Little Nicky, yeah. That's a great movie. I can't remember yeah. who the star that played... Rodney Dangerfield's in that. And then who played Satan? His dad. Uh, I can't remember. Rodney. Wasn't oh, it? Was it Rodney that played him? No. Was it? Wasn't it Rodney Dangerfield that played his dad? I don't know. Star? But, like, he always gets... Oh, it might have been. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. He always... Like, Ozzy was in that movie, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, and then John Turturro's in Mr. Deeds. Yeah. And, like, he, he gets... Very, very he gets, sneaky. He gets g- real good actors. Like, and Steve Buscemi's in, like, all of them. Yeah. Now, some of know? the plot lines are kind of dumb, but it's his, it was his style. It was yeah, just, it's not meant to be taken. Like, no, it's, it's not. It's not meant to win Oscars, you know? No. It's supposed to be an hour and a half of fun. Yeah, yeah. Of, of just goofing around. <clears throat> I like the... Uh, or, uh, fuck. He got to do a movie with Jennifer Aniston. Like that's, Couple. Uh, many actually yeah you're right if you would okay now let's just this is a good question okay you uh, have the same all of a sudden you wake up one day you're in the same situation as Adam Sandler where you can make any movie you can cast anyone in it you know who's your who's who, your love interest who are you casting as your love interest you're casting yourself as a star yeah are you single at this point or are you no you're married yeah. you're married but you know as your job you have to go have a, a rub your naked body against this one actress right. for a couple hours. We're going to get a few takes of it. Make sure you get it right. 
I need to <laughs> make sure you get all the angles. Oh shit! I didn't have the, ca- the lens cap off for huh. the last three hours. Let's oil you up and do it again. That's a you good know, question. Like, that is a. Really that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. So your wife's going to be like, no, he's going to work, and she's in every movie too. His wife. His real wife? Yep. Really? Every movie she's in. Really? really? Yep. Well, I guess when he runs the show, pretty well. So you get to kiss her for sure, though, and have a ma- a, a fake make a fake sex scene, yeah. which is just like Jamaican dancing. I don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're right. Yeah. You ever see a fake sex? My wife watches a lot of shitty, 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 shitty B movies. Like like romance B movies like Harlequin like uh, Pete I got uh, you beat man my uh, wife watches Christmas movies but that you know like the same shit though same shit same man plot for line. Christmas it's a uh, like that's my wife's yeah. she loves it it's like her that's like my wrestling is she is that shit it's just as offensive to me as wrestling is to her same formula yeah, and shit, it's the same movie. dumb you don't have to be smart to watch it you know you just have to watch it and like you have to be it's actually better if you're dumb. So like it's nice. I, I like wrestling because I can shut my brain right off. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, that's what she gets. She likes that instead. But this this is shitty. And oh fuck, my point was it's probably the love scenes in them. Because oh, gonna... the love scenes. Yeah, I watched one the other day. My wife was watching, it and I went in the living room and was watching it. And the guy, it's the guy that's married to uh, uh, the girl from Modern Family, the new Charles. Oh, Sophia. Sophia, yeah. Uh, that. Oh, she, that was... Her husband, the guy that was in Magic Mike, he's yeah. got to do this fake fuck fuck scene in this in this movie I was watching, and he's he's like banging the girl like in her, <laughs> like in her in like, the belly, in the belly, like she's he's way above where the vag would be. It's like where know? we thought it was. She'd be we top three, up. I'd say. That Sophia, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I'd say top three. That, I thought she'd be a little bit too old for you. Oh, I'll, wait, I don't even care. <laughs> you like you like her, eh? A, a, a full figured like uh, Spanish guy. Why not? He's not pulling out either. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'd say. What's your number one? Who who would I have in a movie? Yeah, if you could pick anyone. Mm. I already, I'm 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 gandering right now on my cell phone. Tell you what, you can pick an oldie too. Like you could go. Like I'm not going to say girl. Uh, I'm I can talking, make her in her prime, like Le- <laughs> Sophia Loren or something. No, like, like she was in her prime in the last twenty years. All right, uh, I'll. S- you know, I, I, you know, I always, uh, uh, I like her like a girlfriend, like a, like a, like when you watch her in the movie, you're like, I would, I would like, I would like, uh, I can imagine us hitting it off. Mm-hmm. And then you, you think like that, like a train of thought like that. And then you're like, are you in your fucking mind? Like, stop doing it. You know, you're, <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> she's from St. Thomas. What's her name? Oh Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, McK- uh, Mc, uh, McDavid, uh, Mc, McAdams, Rachel, McA- Rachel, Rachel McAdams. McAdams. Yeah. Oh, so good, good pick, good wow. pick. Rachel McAdams, even like Canadian it. did up. Yeah, wow. But I'll give a, I'll give a consolation prize to who? You know, I, in some movies, more than others. You got a twinkle in your eye right now here. Yeah, <laughs> but I go. I'm going with a redhead. Oh, a little Amy Adams. I like oh, Amy Adams. Right, a little ginger. What about? But uh, then, uh, then you think Amy Adams. You're like, well, if you're gonna go Amy Adams, then why don't you go Borat's wife? Yeah, man. They're pretty much the same girl. Yeah, right? but funner. And then, but she's funner, right? Yeah. And she's cooler, right? Yeah. And then you're like, and I haven't seen her fat in a movie. <laughs> 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 and then, <laughs> or, or, <laughs> and then, and then, so like, I'm like, oh, I'm scrap Amy Adams. <laughs> I'll go Borat's wife. <laughs> Those are two good picks. <laughs> so, but I don't, but like, for some reason, Borat's wife isn't like, uh, as like, uh, she'd be crazy. As hot to me, but like, but she is. Be the most fun. If I look at it on paper, on paper Borat's she... wife's hotter than Amy Adams, but yeah. anyway, she'd be Amy Adams is a good actress. All right, Kev, you're up. But, uh, I, but yeah, I'm going to still, out of those two, I'm going with my first pick. I, I stick with that. Strong. That. That'd be like... Hmm. One and two. One and two? <sighs> you threw me off there with Rachel McAdams. I forgot about her. Yeah. I'm going to go Marissa Tomei. I heard a story about her, too. Marissa uh, Tomei? No. Oh, Rachel McAdams. Yeah. I'm going to go Marissa Tomei. Hold on. Who's that? Who the fuck's that? <laughs> My cousin Vinny girl. Uh, oh, Marissa oh. Tomei. Yeah. She's, she, see her in The Wrestler? Yeah. Good gracious, eh? Yeah. Wow. She's held up, she held up good, but that's yeah. like 10 years ago. Yeah. Or at least, or whatever. We, we got a, we got a bit of a grace period, right? But she does, she doesn't look like she's aging at no. all. And no. She, yeah. She's hot. And we're talking prime too. Okay. I kind of like that girl that he picked for his wife and, uh, grownups. 
the Spanish girl. Oh, yeah. uh, Selma Hayek? Yeah. Selma uh, Hayek. Selma oh, Hayek. you're that's going, t- you're going classic. Yeah. yeah. That's a very, like, uh, f- I like your pick. I'm not like normally a brunette maybe. kind of a guy. I but like your pick. Good. Ooh, I do like those picks, too. Wes? Wes. Older women, though. I like that. I'm the one that's gotten the youngest, I think. I've skewed the youngest. You don't have a second, though. I like that. I'm I'm coming up here. I'm I'm, I'm coming up on the old second here. One second. You're not banging them. You're working with them. Working with them. Especially, yeah. You're Jamaican dancing them. Yeah. (laughs) I'd I'd say uh, Charlize Theron. Oh, good pick. South African. (laughs) Good pick. Charlize Theron. That's like. What is she, South African? South African. Probably Dutch. Reindeer games, you get to see her tits. Yeah. Yeah. I just so you know. I, I think like Mr. Skin. I think she'd be a lot of fun. Like, yeah, I, that was a good pick. Good pick. Uh, Who's number two? Number two. I was going to say Selma Hayek as well. Oh, really? I'll Selma share. Hayek. And, uh, I'm going to throw out, because we got Selma Hayek in here. I'm just going to throw her out as like a like a poor man Selma Hayek, but I'll give her <laughs> a shout out is uh, Penelope oh, Cruz. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, nice yeah, but too. no, Selma Hayek is more beautiful. Yes, the Penelope Cruz, but Penelope are you Cruz talking is like, sexy. Like there's yeah. something sexy. Kind of dirty about her. Are you talking Selma yeah. Hayek in like that fucking movie with um, Frida Johnny Depp? <laughs> no, I don't know what. Like where he's in Blow. Oh, oh, in Blow. No. I'm thinking Salma Hayek. Antonio Banderas. And Antonio Banderas. Oh. We, like real young. Desperado. Yeah, real young Salma. Uh, or, uh, I got a lot of Mr. Skin books out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, I am pretty good at that. If you yeah. tell, I don't have their bo- Mr. Skin books, but I just have a good memory for titties. Yeah. You can just tell me see, a girl and I'll tell you what movie I, you can see your tits in. See, I, see, I got a. Pretty good at it. <laughs> I got a 1A and 1B. Well, let's hear it. Okay, let's hear it. So I got Sophia, what's her name? Yeah. As my yeah. as as three, but she's two. So as one A and one B. <laughs> I like I'm that. going uh uh Wolf of Wall Street, um Margaret uh Oh Margot Margot Robbie. Robbie. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good it's one A. Wow. Oh yeah. Well yeah. done. And good then thing. I'd say like Scarlett Johansson is one B. Oh, okay. Which is which is younger. Yeah, right? yeah. She's, she's got okay. a little bit of both worlds. She likes the funny probably, people too. She's probably your age. I bet. Uh, yeah. Probably not far off. I would say that. Uh, who's your first one? Uh, oh yeah, uh, Rob Margot Robbie. Margot did, Robbie. Did, did you see I Tanya? Huh? Did you see I Tanya? No. The movie I Tanya, no. where she played Tanya Harding. It's, oh no! Is it good? <laughs> yeah, it's really good. I, I when I was a child, my, I love that whole movie. My, it's great. My mom, and my sister were heavy into figure skating, and that story was like a major part of our house, household for hmm. the way they tell that. The there. way they tell that story is really worth watching. It's fun. It's fucking funny. What's it on? Is it on Netflix uh, or is it? Yeah, on? I think it's on Netflix. But they they have. Uh, it's just funny the way they tell the story, and she plays like a real wacky tongue harding. Does they ugly her up too? Yeah, like that's. Oh, see, I that's where you're. That was Charlize Theron. That's that why I said too. Wolf of Wall Street. You know. <laughs> Oh, okay. yeah, and then yeah. uh, Scarlett Johansson, while well, you just pick a fucking Marvel movie, and she's she's a, very she's a attractive. Yeah, or uh, Lost dying. in Translation, where she's young. Yeah, and turn on Bill Murray the whole. No, time. I like her at uh, older, like like today age. I like um, I like every age of Scarlett Johansson. You can't beat it. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty nice, but she's boring as hell as a person. Yeah. Like I just don't think even when she while well, I watch her movies, I'm just bored. Mm. Like I'm just bored with her personality. Sure is pretty though. Yeah, she's pretty. I like to uh, remember the. I know you're not supposed to admit to this, but the you know remember when all the photos got leaked and you could see people's cell phone photos of them naked, mm. and then hers was one of them. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I, I never, never saw that. That. Never saw that one. Not not in front of a mirror. Never saw her. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like, uh, but it's pretty hard to <laughs> not to know that there's a picture of her. Oh, so she lo- she got her cell phone hacked. pictures hacked. hacked. Oh. Yeah, and you're not supposed to look at them because it's like the, it's, they invaded her privacy. Oh, yeah. shit. But there is a picture. If you search it, then you can just see her tits and ass. And then it's like, but that's like a really sexy girl. Yeah, but you and don't know if she's it's her really. F- no, it's her. It's fantastic. I, I did look at it. She's not in front of a mirror in that picture. At all. How do you not look, though? Like, how am I doing uh, any sort of, like, favor to the, the person I don't know? Yeah. Like, I'm just a fan of their work. Why wouldn't I want to see your nipples and your bum crack? <laughs> you know? 
I think I think I think I think Wes won that one though with Charlie Theron. That was a good pick. Really? Right? Yeah, I think so. Mark Robbie's a good pick too. Yeah. There's a lot of hot chicks though. Like, ever, like I should. There's a lot of very beautiful women in the world. It's hard to pick them because then you'll just like all of a sudden I'll be in bed. I'll think about twenty more. Yeah. Like knockouts, you know. And there's all the listeners are like screaming out their favorite. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. You know who I liked in the, the Olympics is going on right now, and I'm gonna tell you I, I, who I ended up falling in love with yesterday was the curler from uh, Italy. <laughs> Uh, she was good looking, and she never missed. And then I just found myself becoming like such a huge a big fan. fan. Yeah, she's like uh, so obviously the best in the world at whatever. <laughs> she's so good. She never missed. She just hmm. kept doing the perfect shots all the time. Best but the she best. was super natural beauty, really hot Italian. And like how they yell out. It's funny when you hear the Chinese teams oh, yell yeah. out hard because they're yelling out hard, which is an English word. Because it's what you yell in curling, like sweep hard or whatever. Mm-hmm. But so they yell the English word, but it doesn't sound English when they yell it because it's got the accent or whatever. <laughs> I don't Pick know. Maybe that's own. not funny. They have their own word for hard, you'd think. Mm, they don't, though. Well, I seen the other day, J- Japanese is like, just take the T out of every every word. What? Take, take the T? The take the T. Out of every word. Mm-hmm. Well, ache. Uh, e out ow. <laughs> how do you do that is that what language is that then Japanese I just did it like when you say don't don't oh like that yeah that's how you do a Japanese accent I guess that's what I see this is how I do a Japanese accent which is uh, not allowed now I'm culturally appropriating right now but this is how I do it uh, yes, uh, <laughs> I will uh, do that uh, in uh, Japan. Uh, like that. That was pretty good. Not bad. You, I do you. it like that. You I'm, all have a giant uh, penis. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm saying that this was a Japanese person that was English and they was saying, ah, oh, just take the T out and you yeah. get, get the accent. I think that that's not a racist accent, what I just did, because it's fairly accurate. But if I do a Chinese. To the one, movies. It's very racist. <laughs> <laughs> because it sounds nothing like any of their real accents. Mm-hmm. Like you hear Russell Peters do his Chinese accent. That's a real Chinese accent that he's doing. But the one that most of us do yeah. when we're just doing it is just uh, very offensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's not based on anything yeah. other than what we don't know. <laughs> like just ignorance. But anyways, I don't know how to do a Korean accent. Hey, if you see the letters of like Chinese lettering, Japanese lettering, and Korean lettering, can you tell the difference? No. Yeah, me neither. But now I well now I one's, can. One's, now I can. One's. My daughter taught me. Oh, okay. Explain. Um, the Korean ones are like more round and stuff. They look like characters, and I think every everything makes a sound or whatever. I don't know. Now I'm mixing them up now. But the Korean ones look round. Like they're like different. They're different than the other two. And then mm-hmm. the Japanese and the Chinese lettering, one of them is stacked, and one of them is like square. More, more up and down. Uh, there are only languages in life where you got to figure symbols out. Yeah, it's there's fun. no letters. Yeah, I don't understand. How I have a typewriter. Or, yeah, how do I have a keyboard for the computer with all those pictures? You know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like they're like so. What one one letter is a word? Yeah, I don't know. Like I, don't, I should have my daughter in here. She can explain it all. We were just in Toronto one time, and there was all these like different re- like like uh, where yeah, different in, Asian food restaurants, right? In Chinatown. But they're in the in the in their own lettering. So then, you, but she would be like, "That place is Korean because the lettering." And then I'd be like, "How do you know that?" And then she's like, "Well, look at it." And then she could tell. And then I realize how dumb I am, like how ignorant I am. Because I, mean, I you just learn didn't look new. at you. Don't even pay attention enough to it. You just know it's not my lettering, right? So I don't look at it, you know. But then to know that there's even a difference, <laughs> I don't know. Dude, what about Arab Arabic? That's another one where yeah, never mind. There's a lot of languages as simple as fuck. Yeah, like how do they do? How do they have all these keyboards? They say English is the hardest to learn, though. Well, I don't know, we won though. Yeah. It, yeah. The most, language that won, thank God, it's the one I only when I speak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah most universal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the French are the ones that I get pissed off about it, eh? They like uh, Quebec's that's that's Quebec's big thing. They're like they can't admit that 
English just won. It's it's not to do with you. You know, it's got nothing to do with you, Quebec. Yeah. Like it's not even to do with Canada. It's just the world. We yeah. we do business in English in the world. In the world. <clears throat> like so, you just like you just have to get over it. You lost. Like and it's okay. You're gonna have to learn English. We're we not, don't have to learn French. We don't. No. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Unless you want to be fucking prime minister. Yeah. Which uh, you, you don't even have to. Or I guess or uh, or work on an airplane. Or coach the Habs. Yeah, coach, coach, the, coach Habs. the Habs. Yeah, you gotta fucking speak French. Stupid rule. Stupid rule. Wow. Well, it's not not a rule, but it's stupid policy. It's like a unwritten rule, isn't it? Or is it literally a rule? I don't think it's really a rule. Yeah, it's I don't even think. It, I don't. Like, do you think the Leafs coach has has to speak English? I don't think there's enough French coaches to go around. I think once, no, they, like get, saying, once but, they get Montreal done, and if Quebec becomes a team, well, fuck, you better find two French coaches, man. No, you get like the best, the the best Russian coach or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. I and do. he doesn't speak oh. English, and he comes over, but he's the best coach in the world, and he's got a translator, and he brings a translator to the press conference and shit. Oh, well, hold on. There's a lot of uh, English like coaches, from North American coaches that coach in Russia. Like Mike Keenan went to Russia. So if you reverse, yeah, it, but I'm saying like yeah. it, I'm saying like just to give the French example for the Habs, you're a Leafs fan, right? So yeah. we're here in Ontario, and you're and you find out the Leafs got a new coach, and he's a Russian coach, and he doesn't speak any English. Don't care, don't care. But he's a really good coach, and he's going to make your team better. Yeah, I'm fine matters. with it because I yeah. I re- don't I how many times a week do you listen to Sheldon Keefe? Fuck, barely ever. Talk to, I want to hear what the players got to say. Yeah. yeah he that's, speaks fuck anyways. That's all. And I, I think that. He says fuck every other word. I thought I said it. I thought I said it a lot. He says it a lot. A play is going wrong up there. Fuck mm-hmm. off. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that is my favorite part of hockey. Yeah. Is the or all sports when they because they can't like ble- they can't like they you you can't bleep, it's all natural. Bleep it it's got to be it's got to be in the moment and organic. It can't be yeah. They can't edit it. Yeah, it's the miking the players stuff. They're doing more of that now. <clears throat> Which then, how do you not say like horrible shit when I, you're playing hockey? Well, based on what I've the videos I've seen of guys when they get miked up, they do a heavy, they do a nice skate around to the team. Hey, I'm miked up. Hey, I'm miked up. Hey, so I think there's like a oh yeah, you know, there's don't, a don't heavy say, conversation. Don't with talk that about person. the rocket in the third row because yeah. your wife might hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't uh, no 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 hard c words. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm on TV. Yeah, it's cool though. I like that real stuff when you can hear I love trash it, talking each other. I, I like watching that more behind the scenes than I do the real thing. I love the real thing, but chirping is my favorite part. Of hockey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I like celebration, end zone celebrations in football. That's my favorite part. I like the stuff that they want to ban in all the sports. Yeah, like when you when I seen uh, Antonio Brown walking off the the Bucks. Uh, team there the other day. I was like, or the last, what was that three weeks ago? I'm like, that's fucking awesome. Oh, what a circus! Like, don't get me wrong, he's a fucking idiot for doing it. But you know, there's obviously some miscommunication there. But for fucking entertainment wise, he's like, oh, I couldn't play. My fucking ankles all fucked up. And then he's he's fucking pran- prancing like a fucking deer across the field. Yeah, doing jumping jacks down the field. It's like, bud, you're you're kind of you've lost your case here. <laughs> you know, get the fuck out there and play. You're getting paid. And then he then it was turned into he was complaining how much money he was making. Oh yeah, it's like, yeah, why am I getting a private contract? And Brady, your buddy's getting paid big on an on a performance salary, and I'm on an earn it salary. It's like, man, you fucking signed the dotted line. You no imagine, one forced you to sign. You imagine people talking about how much you get paid like this, Wes, like at your job. Like people are like talking about your how much you deserve and stuff, and then uh, you you publicly bitch about your pay. Yeah, and then other people talk about it about you bitching about your pay. Like you, like they care. Like it's weird. It's isn't weird. It? Like no one should be knowing that shit other than yourself. You know, I didn't even know this, but but there's a one comedian and. Uh, She's like, she has a job, you know, like a real job. And it's not like a fancy job. It's just a job, right? 
But it's apparently she makes over a hundred grand a year at the job, right? Sunshine list. So she makes the sunshine list, and then other comedians looked it up, and then they like bring it up that they know how much money she makes because it's over a hundred grand. They got yeah. But and a you, public, if it's a publicly traded company, and you get over a hundred thousand bucks, it's got to be broadcast. You got and so like teachers, for example, part of the teachers union or whatever, they got to publish if you get yeah. paid more than a hundred. So they got if uh, all the teachers that. Like you can go look up who makes more than a hundred. A lot of them do. Yeah, but you sign up. You knowingly sign up for that. You don't yeah. sign up for it. It's like the law. That's you, what I'm saying. You knowingly, yeah. when you're working for the county, you oh, know that your you know your your that pay will be become public. Yeah, if you make now, I, and that goes for the same, I guess, for in the sports industry. In sports, yeah. But to be fucking. But I think even that's for weird. someone for someone else to sit on like in this setting. Knowing that that other person could hear and bitch about it, and you're bitching about what that person's making, it's like that's just wrong. You know what I mean? Like, uh, also, it's not, it's not that person, other person's fault. They fucking their the the contract they signed was better. In sports, your agent always knows what other players are getting paid, right? Right. But in real work, like in, when I was working, I could I I didn't know what all my coworkers were getting Me paid, and I and I knew I was getting paid less than some of them that I was way better at. You know, the, at my job. Yeah, you then. could make a ground assumption. And, and I'm like, this guy's been, like, this old guy's been shit for, like, the last two decades. He's getting definitely getting paid more than me. And uh, Now, but, that's easy to say when you're, when, you, when you're making a judgment on, like, years in. You can easily sit, figure, okay, he's been in it for 20 years. He's probably making this. Yeah. You know, it, what, you, what was bothering you the most was is he was taking experience and saying, you know what, I'm just going to fucking... Take it easy just because of my experience. Not whereas you were like, it's all about earning. It's yeah, all about I, earn. Even I, now, if you're a teacher, yeah. you, you just have to, like, sh in Canada, the, you, in show Ontario, up. you just got to show up and you're going to get a raise. You, 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 you go every year, like, you're the matrix that gives you your money. It's like a, you, your pay goes up if you live a year longer and right. work a year longer. And that that's, you didn't have any, you didn't do anything to deserve it, right? So if you have another teacher who's out there like busting really their busting ass. their ass, yeah. trying to like add to go over and above and do the, do things to become add value to society, really good. That person should get a raise based on their merits, but most yeah. likely they won't. They'll just get put into the like you've been there another year, so you get a raise. So it, it turns out anyone that's been there longer, not, even if they've been doing shit the whole time they're there, even if they're off at their job the whole time they're there, they keep getting a raise every year, and they don't. I bet you they never used to do that, like in the 80s and the early 90s. It's probably a meritocracy then. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it probably was. Yeah, and now it's done. Uh, Wait, say that again? What do you mean by that? Oh, like you're, you get raises based on your merit, like how well you perform. Right. That's what I'm – yeah. And I think and now that's what society's become, a bunch of bullshit now, where it's just as well, assumed. Fair. It's not fair. It's yeah. not fair if I don't get my raise. We switched. We we had a fight. I had to fight for it at my old job. Like like a, we would fight to like you know say like we should be based on what we do, and not and so they changed it a bit. Yeah, for us, yeah. But I, that's kind of what we like. We, you, we we try to say like it's not it shouldn't just be like punching in, and then you show up, you get a raise. Like so right. the, the shitty people are gonna are be the only ones that stay. Yeah, the ones that are working their ass off are gonna be like fuck this yeah. place. I'm working mass. I'm not getting more money. Like this guy does nothing. He's he gets the guy doing nothing's like I got it great. Figured it out. Don't do nothing. Get more money every year. You know. Yeah, I'll go start my own company. Make a dick rocket. Okay. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> if you look at any good place to work, the good people are usually the ones that don't stay. Yeah. And then the ones that stay are the ones that are like just keep the bitterness and like keep making everything like more and more poison. Yeah. And until it's done, I have to say we're we're running out. Of t we ran out of time. We ran out of time for the show, but I did want to say big news in the ratings of our show. We have uh, had a long time top 10 list since the beginning of the program. <laughs> and uh, for the longest time, we had two episodes tied for number one overall. It was Fred Eaglesmith and uh, Quit Your Job, The Return of the Rooster. And they were for years neck and neck for first position. Over the last year or two, Fred Eagle Smith has like taken off to be number one by a mile. And quit your job, return the rooster has stayed in second place 
just sitting there, right? Meanwhile, quietly, quietly, over all this time, porno and fisting are German. What? Has decided to make a charge. <laughs> and uh, porno and fisting are German is now solidly our second highest rated Ooh. episode of all time. Shit is changing. Yeah. Hmm. The Mike Staggs moved up the list to high, heavy. Off the list is uh, Pete's birthday. It's it's fallen off the top ten. Jamaica Jamaica's entered the list. Hmm. Uh, Whiskey Night with Jason Ryder off the list. You know, like some some solids like since Whiskey Night with Jason Ryder. That was fourteen. That was number episode like single four. Dig- yeah. yeah, single digit. Yeah, like they we're knocking like the 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 originals off the list with some of these shows. So the OGs like, are gone. Yeah. And now, porno and fisting are German. It may actually, who knows, another year from now, we'll be talking about it, and now porno and fisting are German could take a crack at Eagle Smith, be our number one episode of all time. Craziness. Wouldn't that be something? But it's, it is crazy how that ep- that one episode, and it was just like this, really. Like, it was nothing. We didn't have anything really planned. And for some, I think just the title or whatever, yeah. Dirty People. Threw a good word in there. Yeah, people love that episode. Anyways, that's number two. I just want to say that quickly. And uh, for those of you, we didn't get a chance to get to your uh, feedback this week. Uh, but if you'd like to provide us with some, some go, go to live from the Dutch Hall, gmail.com or the Dutch Hall, gmail.com, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. We're either the Dutch Hall or Dutch Hall or whatever. You'll find us. Uh, also, if you'd like to support our Patreon and join our one Patreon subscriber, Queen Jen Husko, go to patreon.com slash Dutch Hall, and you can get access to the forbidden video Ooh. that, uh, that uh, we can keep only until the guy who's in the video that objects to it uh, finds out that we're letting you see it, <laughs> and then we have to take it down. So uh, if you do that now, we promise we'll send you that video. And uh, that's it everybody and uh there was something else i had to ask somebody but i forget we don't have time anyways <laughs> next uh, time we'll have to do that next week uh but until next week uh we will see you nt uh see you next thursday bye bye everybody <laughs>